Between 2007 and 2009, I spent time in the highlands of central Peru, exploring the concept of yanantin, or complementary opposites, as the fundamental principle underlying the Andean worldview. I wanted to know what it meant to see the world from a perspective in which the polarities of existence, male and female, inner and outer, dream and reality, were seen as interdependent parts of a harmonious whole. Are we in a battle? Or do we dance together? How can we love the world when we feel it's pitted against us? During the time that I was doing my research, I lived in Cusco, Peru a small city in the central Andes. Cusco is surrounded by mountains. Snow-capped and looming, it's as if the spirit of the place are always there, watching, taking note of who we are, waiting to see who we might become. A friend of mine brought me to see Doña Irena, a respected local healer. I asked Doña Arena about her early training in the medicine work, and with my friend translating, she told me a remarkable story. It all began for her in dream time. In her dreams, these beings contacted her and told her, you must recognize who you are and you must walk this path. And so she began with what she learned in dream time. But no one in her own town believed she could be a healer. No one would accept her. Many people didn't want to believe her. A lot of people didn't want to accept her in the community or the family. She was like, no, impossible. You can't be a healer. You must be a witch or something like that. to give up. But then one day, a man who was in love with her took her to one of the faraway mountain towns. There, he told her, she would find a community of healers. The best healers who know about everything and anything. To train her. When she arrived there, she met many people. Many people. But when the villagers greeted her, they introduced themselves as if they were mountains. They would tell her, well, I'm if, if you come to me, I will give you a mesa. I will teach you about you know, what's happening in your community, how you can help them, what you can do for healing them and everything. Mm -hmm. 
Mandaya si kompanyon ani pimena sa pairin mancha ko ni ari tama mancha ko entus kay lama ta ko ko ni kay lama kinar chaya mo no ko pingsan ni ake na ano ko kaya to chaya ko kaya ni na sa pali ko ni na mucho sa kwasi nas pa kam mananya talo ko yaya na ima yaya chichor sa ko to yaya ati ni chu hapi ko ni erkay ko na hapi ko hinas kahra to rin chasay ra to ta Eskribi si nilipin ti iman ni waskan ang payo na siya mong kung saan kaya ni satyo na lukong ko na kung na kung na tawag na kung na tawag ako na apa mong kaya siya si siya mong kaya mong kaya mong kaya mong kaya mong kaya mong kaya siya ang It was kind of strange for her Why is these people having mountain names? She went into an untrusting space She was like, why is these people pretending to be these mountains? And so she closed herself up in a room with a small door and would only allow children to enter. Only children, no men. But even the children spoke to her in this strange way, telling her that they were mountains. Saya kerjakan jas kipu saya kik, saya terawih kita terawih kawan kapeng mana ni poling kini jenis. So this point you start seeing where am I? Where is this place? After days and days of this, they told her, When you when you receive the message of some mountain, you don't become you anymore, you become the mountain. And the mountain becomes you. Your oneness with the mountain becomes your integrity, the very essence of your healing work. So that's why they keep the name, that's why they keep the knowledge, and they're willing to support you in anything that you want, but you must give yourself fully. It was her first lesson. As the years went by, she received the blessing of the mountains and became a respected healer. Now it's lunchtime. to be a mountain, to not think, but simply to be. <laughs>